Hey everyone. So over the last couple of months, I've been reading a lot of comments from viewers regarding Soundflower and how it does not appear to be working correctly under OS 10.9.2. In turn, I'm making this video to primarily demonstrate how to configure the application within Mavericks. I hope it helps those of you who are having difficulties with the application. So the first thing that I want to show is the fact that Soundflower is installed on this computer. Furthermore, under the audio MIDI setup page, you can see that I haven't made any changes. I'm starting from a fresh installation and have not yet added aggregate devices and multi-output devices at this point in time. I'm going to open up QuickTime, my preferred screen recorder, and select a new screen recording. In the input drop-down menu, you should notice that the available options reflect the items that are shown in the audio devices panel. At this point in time, we will create an aggregate device. The aggregate device allows us to specify multiple input sources to utilize at the time of recording. I will select my built-in microphone as well as Sandflower 2 channel. I am choosing Sandflower because this is the input that will capture system audio. Furthermore, I would like to point out that if you're not on a MacBook, the built-in microphone option will not be present. You will have to use a specific input for your USB microphone or the built-in input. So once the aggregate device has been created, we also need to create a multi-output device. The multi-output device allows us to send system output to various sources. In our case, Sound is being sent to the speakers as well as to Soundflower 2 channel, which is also our input in the aggregate device. It is critical that we set the multi-output device as the default for sound output, otherwise Soundflower will not be fed any system audio and the recording will not pick up anything. This is yet another common mistake made by users. So yeah, at this point in time, everything should be set up and we should be ready to record our content. The aggregate device should pick up both the mic input as well as system audio if multi-output is configured correctly. The comments that I've seen on my channel revolve around concerns that the aggregate device was not showing up within the QuickTime input options despite it existing in the audio devices panel. There are two ways to resolve this that I've stumbled upon. First, I would try and set up the aggregate device as a default for input and then completely close QuickTime and reopen it the aggregate device should now be present in the input dropdown. The second reason why I found that the aggregate device does not show up under the input dropdown is because while aggregate device has been created, the user has not specified input sources within the aggregate device itself. Make sure the aggregate device has at least one input source, such as a microphone. The second main concern that users have voiced revolve around volume issues. To adjust the volume of either of the inputs, click the arrow located to the left of the aggregate device and the multi-output device in the audio devices panel. It also probably wouldn't hurt at this point in time to make sure that nothing is muted in the multi-output device, as this would mean that Soundflower would not receive the system audio to begin with, and as a result, even if Soundflower is not muted under the aggregate device, nothing will be fed to the aggregate device with respect to system volume. So now I'll quickly demonstrate that Soundflower does indeed pick up audio from a clip playing on my computer. We will mute the built-in microphone so that QuickTime screen recorder does not pick up sound emitted by my speakers. So as you can see, QuickTime is detecting audio. The audio is still being picked up despite muting the built-in output, which is our speakers. This shows that the audio is coming from Soundflower. When we mute Soundflower, the audio will go away, as you can see momentarily. So that's all I really had to talk about today. I hope this tutorial was helpful and gets you up and running on using Soundflower on OS X Mavericks. 
please feel free to leave feedback and like the video if you enjoy the content. Thank you for watching.